Um, it's at 22 minutes past six. Scams. Maybe you've been targeted, perhaps a suspicious phone call, perhaps a dodgy text asking you to transfer money or hand over bank details. Our fraudsters are getting more savvy and the pandemic's proved provided them with new ways to make money. Yeah, I've seen lots of these coming through on email and text message and quite a few phone calls as well, Neen. There's a lot happening at the moment, isn't there? Yeah, and it's been around for quite a long time, but the thing is, the pandemic and the circumstances around it, they've presented more opportunities for scammers to have a go. Yeah, good morning. We're talking about fraud, and in particular, so-called trusted authority scams. Now, that's when criminals pose as institutions we know well, like HMRC, your bank, or Royal Mail. And since last March, HMRC say that they've detected 421 COVID-related scams with fake texts being one of the most prevalent problems. And they've also forced 400 websites to close, which were trying to fool people into thinking they were entitled to financial help related to coronavirus. And the number of scams where criminals pose as trusted organisations, that doubled in 2020 with more than 39,000 cases. And this is big money that we're talking about. 150 million has been taken from British bank accounts, meaning that each person lost an average of almost £4,000. So what can you do to protect your money? Well, this is Alex Neal. She's the boss at the consumer group Resolve. And now they've seen a big spike in people asking for help. The key things are to um, have a look, if it's an email or a text, to how legitimate does this really feel? So does it have um, the correct spelling and punctuation and grammar? Some scans that are not that sophisticated, you can see that straight away. Um, if the branding is incorrect or indeed if the contact details aren't right or are a bit vague, that can often be a sure sign of a scam. The other big tip, to be honest, is just go with your gut. If you've got somebody on the phone and they're making you feel uncomfortable or anxious in any way, that is often a sign of a scam. What they're trying to do is to rush you into giving out information, often bank details or personal information that you wouldn't ordinarily do. So if you feel that way, just, just stop the conversation. I think the other thing is that um, people on the phone, if they've called up out of the blue and you weren't expecting it and it feels threatening or rushed again, um, just take a moment, put the phone down and call those organisations back directly because you should then be able to have the same conversation but with the security of knowing who you're actually talking to. So basically, if it feels dodgy, as we always say, it probably is. And uh, Dan and Louise, you know, working from home, you're more likely to have your mobile there. You're less likely to be around people who you can bounce off and say this feels a bit weird. And also there are more people online shopping for the first time. So they are vulnerable as well. But HMRC and all of your banks will say, please let us know if this has happened to you. And that gives us more tools to fight this. Nina, thank you very much. Sorry, everybody. I was just putting my breakfast away. Uh, the rules around coronavirus restrictions have led to an increase in abuse towards them and uh, they want it to be made a standalone criminal offence. So Nina is looking at that for us this morning. Morning. There's no pleasing some people, Louise. I know, this I is know. I'm so out. demanding. I find that story this morning. It's not big enough for you. It's an amazing meteorite. Look at it. It's incredible. You've never seen it before. It's not very big, is it? <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it wasn't entirely alone. Oh, no, it was a <laughs> um, Yeah, we are talking this morning about the abuse that's been faced by uh, staff who face customers. And I was thinking about how people who work in supermarkets, delivery drivers, people over the phone, they've been such an important lifeline over lockdown, so it's such a shame that they've faced abuse. Good morning. So, yeah, customer-facing staff in supermarkets at the post office over the phone, they've had to deal with a lot of frustrated customers over lockdown. And reports of abuse have risen dramatically. A survey out today found that the number of workers saying customers are less tolerant has risen just over a quarter at the start of the pandemic to more than half. They also say that one of the main issues causing hostility from customers is when they ask them to stick to social distancing rules or wear face masks. And worryingly, more than half of the workers surveyed say they're concerned that the problem is only going to get worse as we come out of lockdown. Now, there are new calls for a standalone criminal offence to be created for those who threaten, abuse or assault workers. So Boots, Sky, O2 and the Post Office, as well as HMRC, are among organisations backing a campaign to change the law. Here's why. So we've seen a range of things, and that can be from verbal abuse, you know, being shouted at, sworn at, 
also through to physical abuse, you know, where uh, professionals, customer service professionals have been spat out, where they've been intimidated, where people have said that they're going to wait outside until they finish their shift or when they finish their uh, time in the retail store. So it's a whole range of different activities, and uh, mostly will be verbal. But, you know, these sorts of things are, have a huge impact on you know, customer service professionals that have been working exceptionally hard uh, to support us. And we believe very strongly that everybody should be able to go about their job without fear uh, or threat, which is why we're campaigning for a change in the law and for us as consumers to consider more fully our impact in terms of what we, what we say and what we do. And as ever, we'd love to hear from you if you do have a customer facing job and you have faced abuse over uh, the past year. You know, nobody deserves to have that at work. And this report asks us to all think about our own behaviour because we do feel at our wits end a bit at the moment, don't we? And to think when we're dealing with people over the phone or face to face, not to take our frustrations out on them. Separate the issue from the person you're dealing with. Yeah. Easier said than done sometimes, though, isn't it? Thank you very much.